hi, it's Vicky here and today I'm back with a new art journal layout. I have the new Distress Oxide sprays here and today I'm going to play with them to create a really fun background. Before I use them I need to make sure that I shake them well so that the dye and the pigment are nicely mixed inside. There is actually a mixing bowl inside each and every of those bottles and uh, if you store them on the side like I did in my box you will find that you don't have to shake them that much. Now these sprays are shipping today, you don't have to pre-order, you will find all the links down below and I know that everyone is super excited about these sprays so make sure to place your order quickly before they get out of stock. And before I start with my project I just wanted to show you how pigmented they are so they go nicely both on white as well as on dark cardstock. Now for today's project I'm going to work on an 8x8 paper, this comes from a Tim Holtz older paper pad that I had in my stash for years. I'm going to pick one of those papers and I'm going to work on that. Now you can use the sprays directly on uh, the paper and it's going to be nice and vibrant, however I didn't want to oversaturate my paper so first I'm going to lightly mist the paper with a little bit of water. And because I don't want to make a mess, I decided to use a box so that I can do all the spraying in here. Now I'm using three colors. The colors I'm using are Mermaid Lagoon, Vintage Photo and Pilt Paint. And remember this is Distress Oxide which means that it's not going to look as vibrant as it looks at the moment. I'm going back again and again with my sprays and my water bottle to add even more moist on top. And I'm not going to video edit anything out of this process, you will be able to see how nicely it dries and as it dries you can see that beautiful chalky finish that I get. You can of course leave it to air dry on its own but since I am a very impatient crafter I'm just using my heat gun there to make this process a little bit quicker. I think that the Stress Oxide inks are perfect for creating beautiful backgrounds in no time. They give that beautiful chalky finish, it's not very vibrant, it doesn't turn your backgrounds very busy. And since I like to have uh, focal points, to stick focal points on top of my projects, I think that uh, nice uh, backgrounds like this one will really help my focal points to pop even more later on. And I keep on playing with my sprays, adding more layers on top as well as water to help uh, the paint react. And uh, you can add as many layers as uh, you like on top until you are happy with the outcome. Don't be afraid to play around with colors. Remember these colors are going to stay on top and they are not going to turn your page into mud. Now at this stage I'm happy with how my background is looking and I'm going to add some splashes again with my Distress Oxide uh, sprays. I'm just uh, using the three colors that I used for the background. I'm also going to play with a stencil so that we can see how these uh, sprays react through that. This is a stencil which is by Tim Holtz and it is the gradient square layering stencil. I love this because it is very versatile, you can use it for pretty much any project and I'm going over it with my vintage photo and you can see that this stays nicely on top of the other colors. Again I'm not going to use any new colors here, this is the green that I used for the background, so that's Pilt Paint and Blue Lagoon. And here is the beautiful outcome, I absolutely love this background and all the little details that you see there. Now you can still see the text and the printing from the original pattern paper that I used and I also did the same process in another pattern paper just so you can see that uh, I didn't lose the printing underneath. For this one I also applied the water first and then used the sprays on top which made it more like a wash. The text is a little bit faded so it blends nicely with the background. Now I'm going to move on to my actual background and I'm going to add a little bit of Distress Oxide ink. I'm using my blending tool here and I will go around it just to saturate the color a little bit only on the edges. 
And I love that I now have uh, the same color in different mediums. So here I'm using my ink and it doesn't add an extra color on my background. I'm using again vintage photo that I already have on the background. And it is very important for me to keep a couple of uh, at least three colors for the background and use only those. So this way I know that uh, the background is not going to look busy. And the fun continues with the new products, so there are new archival links in Distress Colors. So I'm going to use the Pilt Paint and the Vintage Photo, which are exactly the same colors as the sprays that I used for the background. And I'm going to use those to do some stamping on my background. When I do stamping on the background, I don't want to have the perfect impression, so that's why I'm not using any stamping block here, I just use my fingers and different areas of my stamps. Now the stamps are uh, some of the, my most favorite, I use them again and again on my art journals, it's a set which is called etc and you will find it linked down below. Now I switched to black suit and uh, I'm going to stamp uh, with text a black border all around my paper. Now the idea here is not to read what, uh, what is written there, this is just uh, for visual texture. Now this is a page that will go inside my 8x8 art journal, this is a disc bound journal, so I'm going to take one of those pages. Then I use some black acrylic paint and wet all around the edges. This is not going to show that much, I just wanted to make sure that no white is going to peek through the pack. I'm going to stick those pages one on top of the other and that's why I need to uh, add some holes on my pattern paper. So I'm going to use my punch there. And of course you can just add the pattern paper as a page on your disc bound journal, but I had this idea to add some layers and that's why I did that. So I'm adding a few notches on the sides of my pages with my scissors and I'm going to curl up the edges. And this way when I stick those pages one on top of the other, you will be able to see through those notches. I'm going to use my matte medium at the back, apply a good layer of that so that I can stick those pages together and I will also make sure that where those holes are I will apply enough glue so that uh, these are going to stick nicely. I'm just going to align the holes and everything else will fit perfectly. And I get a lot of questions about the brushes that I use with matte medium just dip them in water while you are working and when you finish with your project make sure to wash them in the sink. Now I love texture so I decided to go again with the same stencil and this time I'm using my spatula and black embossing paste. I am keeping everything quite organic so as I apply the paste I make sure that I don't create uh, perfect squares or rectangles. By using the same stencil as the background, I'm not introducing any new shapes, so I keep everything quite subtle, although I'm going with black. At the same time, black is going to uh, bring everything together with the borders of my project. Now from now on I'm just going to do some collage, I have these packs of uh, ephemera from previous releases and uh, I think I have them for a couple of years now, so it's time to use them again. The pack that I'm going to pick all the images is called Botanical and I'm going to use those rectangle shapes and tuck them underneath all the three notches. The little labels that I chose have a black background so they fit nicely underneath and um, you will be able to see bits and pieces of the flowers and the color popping through. And you can stick them down with your matte medium or any type of glue really. I had my Nouveau Deluxe close by, so I just use that just because it's quicker and I don't have to wash the brush later on. I also went through all those little images and decided that I wanted to use that bird on the right for my focal point and for that I wanted to create a branch for it to stand on top. So I'm just using my scissors and a piece of uh, brown paper and uh, I'm going to cut out a branch. You can also first draw it with a pencil and then cut it out or if you have a die you can use the die. To give my branch the look and feel of the background I'm also going to use vintage photo all over it. Just spray it there and make sure that it is dry. I will use my heat can for that. 
Now to add a little bit of texture on the branch, I grabbed one of my good uh, grain stamps and uh, with my vintage photo archival link, I'm going to stamp on top of it. So I have my branch ready to go. Now I will look for other focal points that I want to stick on top of my page. First of all, the bird. Now I don't want the, the bird to have that uh, white border all around, so I'm just going to use my scissors and cut it out. This way it's not going to look as a sticker and it's going to bond nicely with the background. I'm not going to bother with the legs, I just uh, chop them out completely and I will do the same thing uh, with uh, the borders of a couple of butterflies and I also am going to fuzzy cut a few of the flowers from uh, some of those uh, cutouts. Now I have all the bits and pieces ready to go and all I need to do is to just stick everything down and create my little scene. Remember that uh, just like always you will find the full list of all the supplies that I'm using down below in the description area as well as on my blog. And don't forget to move quickly and place your order if you want to grab the new Distress Oxide uh, sprays. I know they are super hot and everyone will want them and uh, probably they will get out of stock super quickly. Now, I always like to add a motivational quote on my art journal pages, although in this page there is enough space to write something that you like or even stamp anything you want, I decided to go with my quote chips. I've been using them for ages and they never finish. There are tons of them in this package. So I decided to go with two of those quotes today and I just ink them lightly with my vintage photo ink so that they are not so bright and they bind nicely with the rest of the colors. I'm going to finish off my page by sticking down a couple of butterflies, a yellow one just to add a pop of uh, color there and another one in between those two quotes. So my page is pretty much ready, all I need to do is to put it back on my Tix Bump journal. And that was the project for today, I hope you had fun, that you got inspired, thank you all so much for spending some time with me today. Here are some close-up photos on the project and I'll see you all next time.